For decades, the P-51 Mustang had been worshipped as the king of World War II skies. It's sleek, unstoppable, the ultimate bomber escort that crushed the Luftwaffe and brought victory to the Allies. But history, when examined closely, tells a far more complicated story. The P-51's record is remarkable. Nearly 5,000 confirmed kills in Europe alone, more than any other Allied fighter in that theater. Its range of over 1,600 kilometers with drop tanks allowed it to escort bombers from England to Berlin and back, a feat other Allied fighters couldn't achieve in early 1944. Powered by the Rolls-Royce Merlin engine, it could reach 440 miles per hour at altitude and climb to 20,000 feet in under seven minutes, outperforming most Luftwaffe fighters above that altitude. Even Luftwaffe aces like Adolf Galland called it a perfect escort. It's fast, long-ranged, and deadly enough to deter Luftwaffe fighters. By early 1945, the Mustang had swept the skies so clean that daylight bombing over Germany became routine, something unimaginable in 1943. Yet, the best fighter of the war might not have been the Mustang after all. But being perfect in a dogfight isn't about looks, fame, or kill counts. It's about raw, measurable performance how tightly you can turn, how fast you can climb, and how quickly you can outmaneuver your opponent. A perfect dogfighter must be able to turn inside its enemy. In World War II, that often meant completing a full 360-degree turn in under 20 seconds at combat speed. The P-51D took about 20 to 21 seconds to complete a circle at 270 miles per hour, making its turn wider and slower than the Spitfire Mark 9, which managed 17 to 18 seconds, and much less nimble than the A6M0, which could carve a full circle in just over 15 seconds at lower speeds. When climbing away from danger, the P-51D reached around 3,200 feet per minute. Impressive, but still behind the BF-109-K4's 4,500 feet per minute and the Spitfire Mark 14's 4,600 feet per minute both of which could outclimb and leave the Mustang behind. At low speeds, the Mustang's heavier control forces made tight, stall-edge turns more hazardous, while the Spitfire's elliptical wings offered smooth, responsive handling, and the Zero's feather-like controls made it almost untouchable in slow-speed duels. Pilots often remember the moments when their aircraft saved them, or nearly got them killed. P-51 pilots were no exception. USAF ace James Goodson, credited with 15 aerial victories, praised the Mustang's speed, but admitted, if you tried to turn with the Focke Wolf at low level, you were dead. Mustang pilots were trained to avoid turning battles altogether, relying instead on boom and zoom tactics, as a Spitfire, Zero, or even a skilled BF-109 could outturn them. Lieutenant Colonel John C. Mayer, a Mustang ace with 24 kills, described the Mustang as a thoroughbred that needed room to run, cautioning against getting trapped in tight turns. Mustang ace Clarence Anderson acknowledged that against the Japanese Zero in the Pacific, the Mustang would run away rather than engage in the Zero's slow-speed turning game. Reports show many Mustang losses resulted from pilots ignoring training and engaging in low-speed dogfights, where the Mustang's higher wing loading was a disadvantage. Beneath the Mustang's legendary reputation lies a paradox. The very design feature that gave it exceptional range and speed also concealed a critical flaw in classic dogfighting. Its laminar flow wing was a radical departure from most World War II fighters. It reduced drag so effectively that the P-51 could escort bombers deep into Germany without refueling. With a top speed of 437 miles per hour at altitude, the Mustang was faster than both the Spitfire Mark 9 and FW-190A-8, each at around 408 miles per hour, and could even nearly match a Mez-260 jet in level flight at low throttle. However, the laminar flow wing's efficiency dropped sharply at high angles of attack, causing the Mustang to lose speed rapidly during sustained turns. If a Mustang pilot pulled too hard, airflow would separate abruptly over the wing, resulting in a sudden stall, whereas planes like the Spitfire provided more warning in recovery time. German pilots quickly exploited this weakness, training to bait Mustangs into tight horizontal turns where heavier FW-190s and agile BF-109Gs could outturn them and force the P-51 into a defensive position. 
Against the right opponent and in the wrong kind of fight, the Mustang's fame, speed, and range could become a liability. In a turning engagement with the FW-190, that liability could prove deadly in seconds. The FW-190 excelled in sustained low-altitude turns. It would definitely outturn the P-51D and give German pilots a better chance to swing into a firing position. The Mustang's laminar flow wing was optimized for speed and cruising efficiency, not low-speed lift or tight turning. These were precisely the conditions where the FW-190 performed best. With stubby wings and an exceptional roll rate, the FW-190 could change direction far faster than a P-51 in scissors fights. Once a Mustang speed bled off in hard turns, the FW-190 could keep up to pressure until the Mustang broke off or was shot down. The P-51 Mustang wasn't built to win tight-turning fights. It was built to strike at the heart of enemy air power, a mission with far higher stakes than dogfighting. Its defining strength was range. With drop tanks, the Mustang could escort B-17s and B-24s from England to Berlin and back, covering distances no other Allied fighter could routinely cover in 1943 and 1944. This gave the Mustang a strategic role that neither the Spitfire or the P-47 could fully replace. Deep penetration escort missions were more hazardous than melee combat. Mustang pilots flew hundreds of miles into the Reich, meant passing through layered radar coverage and flak belts, and even without interceptors, a Mustang and its pilot could be lost if fuel ran out. The Luftwaffe enjoyed a home field advantage. German fighters could land, rearm, and re-engage multiple times a day, while Mustang pilots fought knowing every gallon of fuel was precious, and every round expended would not be replenished until they reached England. The P-51 Mustang wasn't the first choice for bomber escort, but it was an emergency response to catastrophic daylight losses in 1943 when B-17 and B-24 crews suffered casualty rates approaching 30% on some missions. Its arrival finally allowed Allied bombers to be escorted all the way to Berlin and back, something earlier fighters couldn't do without turning back or refueling. Dogfighting was a last resort. Mustang pilots were trained to avoid prolonged turning engagements, and instead they were told to strike fast, dive away, and disrupt German fighters before they could form effective interception groups. Mustangs did more than fly beside the bombers. They patrolled ahead, behind, and to the flanks, often lying in wait near Luftwaffe takeoff corridors to ambush fighters as they climbed. Mustangs would loiter at altitude above German bases and dive on enemy aircraft as they emerged from takeoff patterns, when they were still slow and less maneuverable. Even the Mez 260 was vulnerable to this tactic. From January to April 1945, Luftwaffe losses averaged 1,500 to 2,000 aircraft per month, with over 60% destroyed in air combat, a rate of attrition no air force could sustain. Mustangs accounted for the majority of Western kills, USAF Mustang groups regularly posted kill ratios exceeding 10 to 1 against German fighters. Some elite units approached 15 to 1 in March to April. By March 1945, single major USAF raids could be escorted by more than 500 Mustangs across the target area, and every approach to attack a bomber stream risked running into a solid wall of fighters. In the final three months of the war, P-51 ground attack sorties destroyed thousands of aircraft on the ground, sometimes more losses in a day than the Luftwaffe could produce fighters in a week. Strafing raids on German airfields in April 1945 effectively erased organized air opposition. The P-51 Mustang's legacy was never about being the nimblest dogfighter in the sky. It didn't have the sharpest claw, but it had the longest reach. It was the fighter that could hunt the hunters all the way back to their nest and burn it to the ground. By 1945, it had not just defeated the Luftwaffe, it had made the very idea of contesting Allied air superiority over Germany impossible. Thank you for watching, and please support my work by subscribing and purchasing my ebooks. You can find the links in my bio description or by searching for Adrian Langsford on Amazon.